Ben and Michelle have made my case a lot easier to make, which is uh, that it's my belief that building national champions in Canada is best done, is uh, most effectively done in the long term through creating an environment for and supporting science-based ventures. And part of the reason why I believe that is because Canada, albeit we've had present company excluded, a very poor record on innovation in terms of getting uh, all the, these report card metrics, especially exporting to other countries uh, products and services that we develop here. Uh, in fact, we have 13 Ds on our most recent uh, innovation report card, which is comparing of wealthy OECD nations in their capacity to innovate. So in terms of the science going on in Canada, we are above the already high uh, bar of these wealthy OECD nations, both in the number of articles we produce out of our universities and companies, but also in terms of the top 1% cited articles in the world. We punch above our weight. As those of you who've taken the innovation course with me know, patents are not my favorite outcome metric for innovation. I call them a quasi-outcome uh, innovation metric or a halfway house because they're not the end goal, but they're a marker that somebody uh, has invested and believed in, uh, in uh, an invention to take it towards innovation. And also, in this case, by the Conference Board of Canada's innovation report card, what they're measuring is triadic patents. So that means somebody's believed in this technology a lot in that they think it's important enough to patent in the US, in Europe, and in Japan. We don't do very well in terms of numbers of patents either divided by population or by research dollars spent. Um, we don't do well in overall amount of venture capital across the country. Now, uh, Vancouver is a little bit better than some other parts of the country, but we don't do well in terms of total amount or amount per deal. We're about half the value per deal as our neighbors to the, to the south. Um, we do do well in new firm density. And so that's formation of firms uh, within the last five years. And that is firms in any sector, can be in, in anything at all. It's just new firm startups. And Vancouver does particularly well here in uh, software and digital media, all these types of firms. But then again, we're back to a D metric when we look at patenting firms. And again, this is triadic patents that are less than five years old. And I care about this metric a lot because this is a proxy for science-based ventures. So we're not getting that really good science, often in universities, out of the lab and into the marketplace. And why is this? Well, there was an excellent poll done by Industry Canada of companies that were more than 20 employees across sectors. And they asked them, what are your major barriers to innovation? Why has there been 30 years of Conference Board of Canada innovation report cards, and we're still not getting the report cards that we want. And the number one barrier to innovation faced by these CEOs was their perception of risk and uncertainty. It's kind of ironic. Risk and uncertainty is where all the opportunity is. That's where the value is created. And so this is a culture, to Ben's point earlier, this is a culture in Canada that we need to work on changing. And this is especially problematic if you're in a science-based venture. And let me just distinguish the language for you here. Um, you know, technology ventures, we all hear about the technology sector, which incorporates any venture that deals with technology. But science-based ventures are a special breed. They are a firm that is both trying to commercialize science or uh, make products and service out of science, but also contributing to the science world to the science base. So they are publishing. They're usually patenting. But they're, they're, they're at that edge of science because the world is rapidly changing. There's tacit knowledge involved. They have to be tightly linked 
to either government research labs or uh, universities and or their competitors. And they do have this longer time to commercialization as both Ben and Michelle have talked about. They have higher rates of uncertainty. So if your major barrier to innovation and to spending money on innovation is your perception of risk and uncertainty, science-based ventures are in particular, uh, have a particular problem there. This is another uh, comparison looking at, you know, Ben talked about the comparison with uh, software firms and IT firms. This table, let me just think about the red areas as being examples of science-based sectors and science-based ventures, and uh, the top being the straw man to compare, being what's generally thought of as technology ventures or the technology sector. Say if you were in an apps development and you were doing this in your condo or in your garage, it might take three months. It might take a couple hundred thousand dollars. R&D costs are low. The commercialization costs scale up, not much, not, not huge. And although there is market uncertainty, the technology uncertainty is low. Now a totally different beast when you look in the science-based sector. You notice that in particular the technology uncertainty is very high. And that's something that we're not entirely comfortable in Canada dealing with. Uh, and we haven't, we need to educate people better about how to deal under conditions of technology uncertainty. And there's a lot of opportunity here. You might say, well, hey, uh, as a venture capitalist, as government, uh, government funding, why shouldn't I take the low hanging fruit? Why shouldn't I invest in the lower uncertainty, lower capitalization costs, lower time frame, IT sector? Some of the biggest problems in the world reside in this sector. They also, I'd like to argue tonight and in the panel discussion afterwards, are an excellent source of potential national champions. This is a long-term play, as per the discussions earlier tonight, but it is a play where you can build uh, firms that can be exporting around the world and where you can appropriate value and build good jobs and large companies locally. And how do we do this? Well, we've tried to do it uh, to a certain degree through the MOT MBA, but we also have decided to do um, a minimal viable product, you might say, um, a smaller version of the MOT MBA, which is, uh, is a mini MBA customized towards scientists and engineers, those who might not take an MBA, but who have been working on innovation ideas in their labs, um, their graduate uh, students and postdocs, and also uh, people who, who are in industry for a few years, who have an idea for uh, large economic and social value creation. They're facing complex and uncertain commercialization, and we're trying to uh, give them the skill sets to manage better under prolonged conditions of technology uncertainty and give themselves and Canada a better chance of uh, being able to uh, value, uh, create value from that technology.